Hey everyone, so I'm in the process of moving my printer to a new location and doing some much needed repairs and upgrades to it. In the last episode, we replaced this busted Arduino Mega that had a broken USB serial communications chip, this little chip down here, uh, with a brand new Arduino Mega. You can click here on the screen in order to go see how I did that. And in this episode, I figured it was time to do an upgrade. So the Raspberry Pi 2 came out a few months ago and unlike the uh, Raspberry Pi 1, this has a 4-core, so it's a quad-core, 900 megahertz processor, and it's just altogether beefier and uh, I think would be perfect for running Octoprints. So if you haven't heard of Octoprint before, it's basically a server that you set up and run on a Raspberry Pi that you then connect your 3D printer to, and it makes your 3D printer internet accessible. Um, you can control your printer from anywhere that you have internet access. Uh, it also does some cool stuff, like if you connect a webcam to it, it'll create time lapses of your prints for you. However, that is video rendering. It takes a bunch of pictures and then renders it into a movie afterwards. And the original Raspberry Pi that just has a 700 megahertz single core processor, it's not too good at video encoding. It takes a long time in order to make that. Which is kind of a problem, because if you're doing multiple small prints in a row, uh, sometimes the time lapses can get messed up, and this thing just does not have enough horsepower in order to do all that rendering. However, the Raspberry Pi 2 came out, and with its quad-core 900 megahertz processor, should be much more suited for that kind of encoding. So I finally decided to pick one up. If we pull it out, we can see that this is the Pi 2, and it looks... Uh, very similar to the original, well this is the Raspberry Pi Model 1 B Plus. You can see that they look pretty similar. They have the same form factor, the same number of Ethernet ports, and all of that kind of stuff. So, let's look a little closer into what makes the Raspberry Pi 2 pretty cool. So you can see that the form factors are almost identical. Um, with the original Raspberry Pi up here, and the Pi 2 down here, has the same form factor, same number of I.O. pins, um, they both still use the uh, micro uh, SD card over here, powered by a micro USB port. They all have the uh, HDMI outs and the audio outs, all of that kind of stuff that you would expect. So, it should be pretty easy just to swap over uh, my original Raspberry Pi that had Octoprint running with the Pi 2. So let's grab the latest version of Octoprint, throw it on here, and get that thing up and running. So we have the SD card that we put the Octopi image on. So we can just take this and we can insert it into the bottom of the Raspberry Pi 2. And it just clicks in very nicely. And now what we're going to do is I'll take my Ethernet cord and pull this over here. We'll plug in the Ethernet. And now that we've set up the static IP, this all should work properly when we plug it in. A nice click. And then finally, the last thing is to give it power. You want to have a pretty beefy uh, micro USB power supply. The one that I'm using was built for a tablet and it can supply up to 2 amps. The Raspberry Pi, um, they recommend anything over 1 amp, so you need a, a pretty strong micro USB power supply. But hopefully, when I plug this in, everything should work and light up. There should be no magic smoke being released. You can see that we have the two lights up here to indicate that we have power and that is actually up and running. So now let's head back over to my computer and see if we can actually connect to the Pi. Logging into Octoprint for the first time, it'll give you the access control configuration. And this is where you can set a username and password uh, so that no one can just log right into your Octoprints and, you know, control your printer. Uh, you actually have to put in access control. If you don't want that for whatever reason, you can click disable access control, but I do not recommend it. I would always recommend putting a username and password, just so some random creep on the internet can't just get into your Raspberry Pi and turn on your printer and turn everything up to the max settings and, you know, burn your apartment down. You don't want that. So here, just enter a username, that's what I'll do, and a password, and 
it'll bring you keep it enabled and it will bring you to the main Octoprints. Also, if you haven't taken a look at Octoprints plugin manager, well, you can see that there's a lot of awesome plugins that you can download that add some really neat functionality to the Octoprints. So, just browse through the list of plugins and install the ones that you think are awesome and have fun with them. So we are almost ready to start our first test print since we installed that Arduino Mega and installed Octoprints on the Raspberry Pi 2. So you can see that I have Octoprint up here and running and I have all kinds of cool plugins and stuff in it. However, what I'm more interested in is the webcam streaming. So I have the webcam hooked up and you can see as I'm moving around the webcam it's actually very very responsive. Um, which is cool because on my old setup it was actually not really good at streaming. But with the auto time lapse feature I'm curious to see exactly how quick it will make a time lapse and how much of the CPU usage it will use. So I just have top the uh, Linux command top running here and you can see some CPU usage stats up here. So I'll be watching that as it's recording time lapses and actually rendering the time lapse afterwards. So let's start the prints and let's see how the time lapse turns out. So we have finished our first prints and the print looks good. I haven't pulled it off the print bed yet but more importantly we are now rendering the time lapse and you can see that the uh, the CPU percentage for the actual time lapse rendering it's peaked out at 100 percent. So that's a good thing. That means that this is taking advantage of all of the cores of the Pi 2 which means that this should be dramatically uh, faster than on the original Raspberry Pi which is cool because that's what I was hoping for. So with a 16 minute print and a time lapse, if we go over here, a time lapse set to every 3 seconds to take a frame, um, we'll see how long it actually takes to render that time lapse. And here's the finished time lapse. You can see the artifacting, the bit rate's not high enough, so I'm going to have to play around with that. However, the time lapse, it rendered in only about 2.5 minutes, which is a dramatic improvement from the Raspberry Pi 1. So I am more than happy with that. So, I think that concludes my upgrade from my Raspberry Pi to the Pi 2. And I think that it is a worthwhile investment. The Pi 2 is still only about $35. And it is awesome. It's very easy to set up Octoprint on it, um, just like the original Raspberry Pi. And so far, the performance improvements that I've seen just in rendering this single time lapse more than justifies uh, the cost to upgrade to the Pi 2. So, thank you guys for watching and joining me on this adventure of upgrading my 3D printer setup. I hope that you liked the video, and if you did, please leave that thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe for some more stuff coming down the line. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.